cleanup, we take a deep dive into social media and how it affects our mental health. Plus, Americans' health care is causing mistrust in many around the country. And our very own Cal State Fullerton Associate VP tragically passed away. We'll talk more about this tragedy and more starting now. This just in. Now in tech news, the first responder on the scene. There's been a lot of collaborative efforts over the blessed to be here in Fullerton. Brought to you by the Broadcast Journalism students at Cal State Fullerton. Thank you so much for allowing me to have the opportunity to be here. OC News starts right now. Hello, and thank you for joining us here at OC News. I'm Gabe Larson. And I'm Jacqueline Garcia. OC News is brought to you by the Broadcast Journalism students at Cassidy Fullerton. Social media is a great way to virtually connect with friends and family. However, many people let social media sites consume their lives, which can have a negative impact on mental health. Reporter Nadine Alfaro has more on this issue. May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and social media is one of the main causes young adults suffer from depression and anxiety. I got the opportunity to speak to a young social media blogger where she discussed her journey on healing her mental health. Studies have shown that young adults from ages 18 to 24 are using social media up to nine hours per day, allowing it to take over their lives, affecting their personal life and their mental health. Social media has affected my mental health. You have people posting their lifestyles and how they look and um, already not feeling like who you are is enough. I was out constantly going back and forth from deactivating it and reactivating it um, because I was still scared of what other people thought of me. Depression is prevalent in young adults in their 20s. According to researchers, social media is responsible for 79% increase in deaths for young adults. It takes effort for many to pull themselves out of a dark place. So social media has affected our society in a way where it would never be the same because you have access to the internet and different social media platforms like TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat. Studies show in the U.S. that 69% of adults and 81% of teens deactivate their social media accounts to do a mental detox and just by those numbers alone should show you that mental health is real serious and the things that you see online not not only what you see but what you post what you read has effect on your mental state trauma from social media can have a lasting impact unless people are able to get help to move forward from Jaden and use a deactivation process to focus on her mental well-being Rejecting the need to compare herself to others wasn't easy, but she was able to find a way out of her tough situation. Social media has taken over our lives when it comes to what we do and where we go. It's literally at the touch of our hands. It has its advantages and it has its disadvantages. One of those disadvantages comes to people being on their phones constantly, comparing themselves to others, which causes depression and anxiety. However, with Jaden, she fell into a dark hole where she tried escaping the reality of trying to be perfect. I um, basically put my value in or my worth into my following account number. Um, if I didn't have enough uh, followers or if I wasn't getting enough <laughs> likes, um, I was telling myself I wasn't pretty enough or um, other people that I would see active, um, I was like, they don't like me. We've always been close, doesn't matter what happens, but. I know since social media has affected her, it's also affected our friendship. She's very close to herself now. She was always very outgoing on her social media. She would always post things. Social media took over so many people's lives so quickly. It's important to use it in a positive way, connecting with people rather than comparing your life to someone else's. It's up to each individual to be their own person and live their own life. This is Nadine Alfaro reporting for OC News. While medicine has advanced greatly, what about the treatment? Our very own Annette Valderrama has more. Thanks, Jackie. I spent some time with two sisters to find out why social media is having such devastating consequences for teen girls. Let's hear what they have to say. Valerie Rodriguez and Adrena Vaca have been battling with FOMO, the fear of missing out. Like, when I see somebody, like, on social media that looks maybe better than me or something, I try to, like, make myself kind of look like the person that I see. 
Older sister Valerie noticed an unhealthy trend in addiction to social media after their parents took away her phone multiple times. I think it affects like how I interact with anybody, but sometimes I do think it's kind of hard to get off. And, like I have school early in the morning or when I have work early in the morning, it's kind of hard to get off. And, like I know that's bad, but I just can't get off of it sometimes. Yeah. Social media has also been linked to higher rates of anxiety, depression, and eating disorders in teen girls. According to the Journal of Psychiatric Research, 95% of adolescents in the U.S. report using social media, with a large proportion of youth reporting being online constantly. In the same study, it was reported that teenage girls on average experience more mental health related issues when using their phones at night compared to boys of the same age. I spoke with clinical psychologist Dr. Ken Keish and asked why teenage girls' mental health is often affected more by social media than teenage boys. Sometime around puberty, uh, 12, 13, 14, uh, teenage girls crash. Um, they can be a students. They can be uh, soccer stars. They can be great at dance or whatever other, uh, you know, playing piano or an instrument. And so they have all of the, the things in the world that support positive self-esteem, strong positive self-esteem. And then, boom, right around puberty, uh, none of that seems to make any difference. People compare themselves uh, to other people on social media. Some ways teen girls and everyone else can combat the effects of social media affecting their mental health is cutting off screen time 30 minutes to one hour before bedtime, creating a sleep schedule, knowing when it's time to stop scrolling on your phone, follow others who inspire you, and create better mindful habits. It's affect more females and males. It's put out there that they should look a certain way or be a certain way. And, and sometimes the female, the individual, uh, may not feel up to par. As of February 16th, senators introduced a bipartisan bill that aims to protect teens and children from the dangers of social media. TikTok or Instagram, I just get hooked on it. And I should be doing like my homework or a project, but I just can't. So I'll usually be doing like my homework last minute, right before school because I was on social media. Valerie and Audrina's parents were on the right track in putting limits on how much their kids are on social media. This is Annette Thadarum for OC News. While medicine has advanced forward greatly, what about the treatments? Katie Doan has more. Being sick has already been difficult enough as it is, but for one woman, it is the absolute worst. We're here in Los Angeles to discover this woman's incredible story. Uh, my name is Sarah Jordan, and it actually has a capital R in it, more like Sarah, but nobody really called me that but my mom. Sarah's life has always been living with a number of illnesses, including lupus, which greatly affects her day to day. In 2019, she suffered the greatest loss at 40, her fertility. So they said, yeah, your, your uterus is upside down. It's all fused together with your digestive or organs. So your reproductive system and, and digestive system is fused together. Um, they said the colon was in between the ovaries. Um, there were cysts, endometriosis, and fibroids growing. Um, there was nothing they could do but to do a complete hysterectomy. Black women are three times more likely to develop these fibroids and rabbit aging due to the turbulent environment they live in. In the African American community, that is a very common ailment to have. What isn't something that should be common is being unable to get treatment for it. Implicit bias within medicine has repercussions. As black women are not being heard, they risk their maternal health. Sarah is one of the many black women who lost their fertility over the lack of action as others lose their lives giving birth to children. These issues are so overwhelming for Sarah that she considered leaving the country altogether for better health care. And it's so funny because I don't romanticize leaving the country at all for any reason, but it's so funny because I always have this dream that I moved to another country and my health is better. Yeah. And it's not that I like got healed or jumped into some magical waters and swam or whatever. It's just because I felt, I feel like if I leave and I'm thankful for our freedom. I love our military. I'm grateful to be born in a country where I can go to school and vote and drive. But the oppression of being a black woman in America, it's so heavy and it's so oppressing that I really feel like if I, oh. 
if I move to another country, I just feel like I would heal because I'm scared here. That's how I look at it, you know, it's not to like chase a boy band or go start this fantastic life somewhere. I'm just like, I think that mentally just leaving oppression. I know racism exists all over the world, but I do strongly believe your environment your environment has a lot to do with how you feel. There are so many people that are suffering every single day here in America, and it's always important to be able to advocate for those people who are specifically hurting in certain communities. For now, this has been Katie Doan, OC News in Los Angeles. You can always visit AHI.org and AAFP.org to find more information about implicit bias in healthcare. You can also watch Oprah's Color of Care or Medical Racism, The New Apartheid for an in-depth analysis on this issue. The Titans here at Cal State Fullerton are mourning the loss of a valued member of our faculty. Our reporter Travis Jeppaway is here with the details. Thank you, Jackie. The Associate Vice President of Cal State Fullerton's Capital Programs and Facilities Management is no longer with us, but he has left a lasting legacy in his absence. I found out more about who he was and what he did around campus. I would like to say, you know, he's, he's no longer here, but I still rem I remember him and thank him for all his counsels, advice, motivations, and you know, that is, that is uh, what, you know, keep me going. We all come to Cal State Fullerton and experience a part of the campus. Whether it's parking, walking across campus, visiting the library, eating at the TSU, or even just going to class, there is a lot to the campus. In fact, the campus is 235 acres with around 5 million square feet of facilities. That's a lot of campus to maintain and keep up with. That's also not including the small things being done to the campus to improve it for not only students and faculty, but for the environment as well. One of the people who had a direct impact on this at Cal State Fullerton was Dr. Ali Azadian. Dr. Azadian joined CSUF in 2016 and worked his way up to become the Associate Vice President for Capital Programs and Facilities Management. They even have a direct involvement in the new student housing project, Pollock Library renovations, McCarthy Hall renovations, baseball and softball facility improvements, the dual bin solar waste compactors located on campus, and water bottle refill stations. Dr. Zadian had a part in it all until he died of a heart attack on April 24th. While he is no longer with us, he left a lasting impact on all of those who had the honor of working with him. He was the most hardworking person I've ever seen. Uh, he would be here before anybody else is here. He's, he's here in his office until late. And, uh, you know, always, always, you know, thinking about doing something, you know, improving something, making something better. That's what he always thought about. The campus, the people. At an all division meeting, CSUF president Fram Virgi spoke about Azadian's impact, stating, He was such an amazing guy. He brought love, laughter, care, and creativity to everyone he met. Titans have made history and contributed to America's greatest moments. I was fortunate to be able to sit down with a former Titan to reflect on the life he's had serving our country as he prepares for retirement. A prominent figure in Orange County politics is stepping down at the end of this year. Craig Green, a 1975 Cal State Fullerton alumni, former mayor of Placentia, and current city councilman is retiring after 19 years in city politics. My neighbor down the street came down and told me, Craig, you gotta go to City Hall. There's something wrong. I says, what, Chuck? He said, they're trying to outsource our police department. He says, that ain't right. There's something wrong with that. Well, I had never thought about going to a city council meeting, never even been to one. I said, okay, Chuck, I'll go. And since February of 2003, I've only missed nine city council meetings. After years of political involvement and four years as Placentia's treasurer, Craig would finally run for political office, winning his bid in 2014 for city councilman. He would eventually be chosen as mayor pro tem in 2015 and elected as mayor in 2016 and 2020. Craig would go on to make many notable achievements in city politics, Despite still having the energy and passion to continue on with politics, 
Craig became a victim of changing election rules. We, we created the districts, one through five, to go north and south so that each city council person had part of the north end of the city, the center part of the city, and the south end of the city, which I think was fair. That was great. Well, then our friends in Sacramento changed the rules, changed the laws, and all that kind of stuff. Oh, well, you, you can't do that anymore. You have to do it this way. You have to do that. You can't have narrow connect. They just went snaky. So we had to totally redraw the districts. Well, somebody was going to get left out. So I said, you know what? I'll be that guy. I'm okay with that. Craig has left a significant legacy here in the city of Placentia. He's being recognized by many of his colleagues and former city officials, one of these being former police captain from the Placentia PD, Gary Sprague. And if you can credit why the city is running as smooth as it is, why it's as attuned to who it is, to what it is, um, you have to credit Craig Green. Craig has enjoyed his time in public office and is looking forward to spending retirement with his wife and their growing family. This is Gabe Larson reporting in Placentia for OC News. Finals week is among us. Does anybody have senioritis? Because I know I do. Our reporter Katie Duan was out in the field talking to some seniors about how it feels to finally walk across the stage and get their diploma. Graduation is finally here and this class of spring 2022 is able to graduate. I was able to talk to a couple of students to see what their plans are after graduation. Graduation has been a long road for many as one computer science major took five years to finally walk. I'm graduating with a degree in computer science in about two weeks um, so it's pretty exciting. Yeah. It's about five years. I started in 2017 so I took an extra year uh, to finish up my classes but yeah. Um, I'm looking for an internship or a job and if that doesn't work out then my backup plan is a master's but I'm ready to get out there but nervous um, about, you know, leaving and finding a job. I feel great, you know, just finishing up those last classes. It's a bit stressed, but, you know, it's kind of happy. It's kind of like bittersweet seeing the campus for almost the last time. Congratulations to the class of spring 2022. This has been Katie Doan at Cal State Fullerton, and I will see you at the ceremony. Wow, graduation. That sounds nice if I could get there after this semester. What do you graduate? I actually graduate in a few weeks. Congratulations. Yeah, thank I have you. One more semester. Wow, good luck to you. <laughs> when we come back, we'll talk about the women's protest on abortion that happened in Anaheim last week. And Titans, finals are right around the corner. Do you need a quiet place to study or de stress? We'll tell you all the perfect places to relax on campus. swarmed the streets of Anaheim after hearing about the leaked documents showing that Roe v. Wade may be overturned by the Supreme Court. Our own reporter, Dominique Tanori, was there to get us the details. Yes, there were several protests going on here in OC and LA, where several protesters marched through the streets of Anaheim down towards Disneyland where they stood their ground to show their support for women's rights. Let's take a look. Last week, the Supreme Court leaked to overturn Roe v. Wade. This leak created a big protest across the country in several states. If Roe v. Wade is overturned, 27 states are likely to ban abortion once Roe is gone. Back in January of 1973, the Supreme Court issued a 7-2 decision in favor of Jane Roe, 
holding that women in the United States had a fundamental right to choose whether to have abortions without excessive government restriction and striking down Texas abortion ban as unconstitutional. Several women and men came out to the protest with posters and speeches prepared on women's issues. ...and same-sex marriage are next. We all know that BIPOC women and AFABs are the most affected by the ban. And the attacks on our reproductive rights, this has been five decades in the making. It's not this so-called Supreme Court. This is deeply rooted in the racist mindset and culture of enslavement that regards all who are non-white men as inferior and their bodies as subject to the will of those in power. My name is Shayla Kushner. Um, I'm out here supporting women's right to have the freedom to abort if they need to. I'm here at the OC Women's March where women are protesting against Roe vs. Wayne being overturned. My name is Chloe Serrano. I co-founded Melanated Youth. We are a black, indigenous, and people of color youth-led coalition. We are grassroots funded. We focus on mobilizing our youth through organizing. So we have organized protests, rallies, webinars, and most importantly, mutual aids. As the march through OC began, several cars and buses honked and cheered through their windows. Marching towards Disneyland, the most popular theme park in California, the protesters took control over traffic in front of the entry and exit way of the Toy Story buses going into and out of Disneyland. They stood there for over five minutes, stopping traffic and chanting for women's rights. I'm Dominique Tenori reporting for OC News. Titans, if you're looking for a new place to study or simply hang out and relax, head over to the Fullerton Arboretum to spend some time with Mother Nature. Titans, if you're looking to unwind after a long semester, then head on down to the Fullerton Arboretum. The Arboretum, which was first built in 1976, is open to the general public and is next to Goodwin Field and has seen its uses change from plant research and botanical uh, research. Um, but now it's more become of a place for uh, students to just kind of hang around. We are a, an accredited level four arboretum. So um, that means we have endangered uh, plants and animals inside. Stop by the ponds to get a glimpse of the local wildlife and be on the lookout for some major landmarks and also be on the lookout for coyotes and coyote pups recently. So if you see them, don't approach them. Make a loud noise if they do approach you and whatever you do, do not turn your back on them uh, because they will start to see it as a chase and go after you. Brian Ponce reporting for OC News. Well, Titans, I'm sure we're all excited for summer to finally be here, but you might need to be extra careful of bugs this summer. Our very own reporter, Brian Ponce, is here with the story. Summer is coming back, but so are some unwanted visitors, and Orange County's Mosquito and Vector Control District is getting ready to suppress the mosquito population. Vector Control protects the public health by eliminating or eradicating the mammals, birds, insects, or other animals that transmit disease. Or, as Assistant District Manager Laura Young puts it, So Vector Control is an independent special district, and we control for vectors and vector-borne diseases in Orange County. And we've been established since 1947 when we had uh, soldiers coming back from World War II and had the potential of vectoring um, malaria into the county now. So when you head out this summer, instead of applying that sunscreen first, you may want to put on that mosquito repellent instead. And if a mosquito does bite you, chances are that it's a female. Because... If you didn't know this, male mosquitoes actually don't bite. So they're primarily nectar feeders, whereas the female mosquitoes do require a blood meal so that they can make their eggs. And in terms of like what they like to bite to receive that blood meal, that can include uh, warm-blooded animals like people, pets, and a whole variety of wildlife. And then they'll also bite cold-blooded animals like frogs and lizards and even snakes. Vector Control does their best to suppress the mosquito population by following a spray schedule and setting out traps throughout the county 
and having crew members check on drain pipes throughout the county. But among the most interesting tools at their disposal are mosquito fish, which if you put in any pool of water, eat mosquito larvae. Female mosquitoes lay their eggs in standing water, and the water only needs to be half an inch deep for them to lay the eggs. Residents can help suppress the mosquito population by doing one simple but effective thing. You remove the water sources, you'll reduce the number of mosquitoes. So tip out any standing water, toss out any containers you don't need, and take action by wearing repellent so you can prevent bites. Brian Ponce, reporting for OC News. With property prices quickly increasing, not everyone can afford housing. Homeless shelters provide a huge security blanket for those in need. Reporter Mariano Tornier has more. Thank you, Jackie. The housing issue is becoming a huge crisis in Orange County. I got to talk to a few students about the new housing proposal. There's an ongoing dispute between organizations and Governor Newsom. The governor's proposal is regarding housing introduced as community assistant recovery and empowerment. The proposal desires to connect 7,000 to 12,000 individuals to housing and behavioral treatments. However, organizations fear the effects it may have on individuals being forced. I think it's important that homeless people have a matter of say in it. I think it's, it sounds like a good cause, but I think um, homeless people should also have their input on it too. If they feel forced to it, I don't think it feels right to just force them into something they don't want to do. Organizations such as shelters play a role. I think it helps homeless people have resources where they can get help and possibly make connections with other people who are experiencing the same thing that they're going through. So I, I think it does bring a good sense of community there. Due to the political nature of the topic, organization staff members cannot speak on the matter. This is to ensure the safety of their patients as well as their own. Located in Santa Ana, California, Mercy House is an agency that helps individuals with a housing crisis. Within the region of OC County, there is a total of 22 housing services, one of them being shelters. OC native Maddie Terry shares her opinion. It's beneficial because you never know when something's going to happen to your life, and if you needed somewhere to go, you actually have a safe place to live and somewhere to be where you're not going to get yourself in trouble and you have the help and the resources that you need. Um, I do know someone that was uh, homeless. She was actually living in her car and it was my old co-worker and she had to live out of it for about a year before she found a place and could even actually afford a place. Grace Brown Womack, Housing Solution Director, emphasizes that the agency believes that housing is a basic human right. She also brings to light the importance of the community being involved. One is able to get more information by going to their website. Students who are struggling to find a warm place to stay can get help by going to the student affair offices. By doing so, students who are in need will be assisted by guided experts. I'm Ariana Turner reporting for the OC News. Well, Titans, softball and baseball had a busy weekend on the road this weekend. Travis Jepoy is here for more information. Thanks, Gabe. The Titans softball and baseball had road games this weekend, things did not go very well for them. Here's a quick recap of the weekend results. Cal State Fullerton Athletics had a rough weekend on the diamond. Starting off with softball, the Titans went to Hawaii to face the Rainbow Wahin for the first time since 2018, but that trip was no trip in paradise. Game one was on Friday and the Titans lost zero to one. The game was a defensive matchup with great pitching on both sides to keep it a low scoring game but in the end, the Titans couldn't come out on top. It wasn't due to a lack of base runners, but getting those runners across home plate that stalled the Titans' offense. Hawaii scored the only run of the game in the bottom of the sixth. Game two was on Saturday and displayed all the scoring that the previous game left out. The first couple of innings saw Hawaii come out strong, scoring three runs before hitting a grand slam in the third inning, and then adding a few more runs on to end the third inning 10-1. The Titans were down, but not out. They clawed back run by run and ended up tying the game 11-11 in the seventh, sending the game to extra innings. It was in the next inning that Hawaii ended up winning with a walk-off home run to win the game 13-11. 
Baseball had a similar struggle as they faced the UCSD Tritons. The Titans lost game one, eight to four, only to come back strong in game two and win 19 to seven. But then they slipped up again in the series finale to lose six to four. Game one was a close match until the seventh inning when the Tritons broke the lead open and the Titans could not get it back. Game two was a highlight game with a total of 26 runs scored. The Titans did what they needed to do to correct the issues they faced the night before and were able to come out on top. Here's head coach Jason Dietrich and what he had to say regarding the game. I think they walked us 10 times and this four times. I thought they did a good job. Uh, you know, we took advantage of their freebies. I think they walked us 10 times and this four times. Then we strung some hits together. And, you know, in college baseball, it's not easy, obviously, put ten, a 10 spot up. Uh, but our guys just kept on passing them to the next guy, doing a good job. And, and at times, you know, you get up that er that much that early, you know, guys can kind of not cash it in, but they got to keep plugging away. And I thought they grinded it out for the remainder of the game. They've been, they've been playing hard. Uh, we just been, you know, like I said, unfortunately, making some mistakes that have been costly. But to rebound, and that's why I told them, just every day is an opportunity to get out there and get better and compete. And I thought they did a good job from not competing today. I'm looking forward to getting after tomorrow and hopefully uh, get a series win. Unfortunately, the Titans did not come out and win Game 3, as the game went into extra innings with the score tied at 4. But the Tritons were the only ones to add on to that score, ending the game 6-4. to four. So it was a rough weekend, but hopefully the Titans can come back strong after that rough weekend and get back to their winning ways. I like seeing some win our teams win. What about you guys? Yeah, I'm actually one of the cameramen for all the baseball games, and I've been keeping track of the team. Like, they're actually pretty good this year, so this is probably just a fluke. Yeah. Anyway, thanks, Travis. Still to come, details on the newest technology coming from Amazon. And which teen heartthrob just welcomed their first baby? We'll be right back. Observe a domesticated human family in their natural habitat, known to their species as the backyard. Oh, you think I should light it now? I think it's him. Yeah. 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 Oh dear, someone is about to burn a pile of debris that's too tall, which can start a wildfire. It is. It's Smokey. It's Smokey Bear. What a legend. Smokey. What's hey, it's here? Smokey. Sorry, it was too high. Right. No, 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 Watch no. as he astutely ensures that there's no wind and how he removes some of the debris to create a smaller, safer burning pile. No, you, you, see, make it big. No, you can't make it bigger, baby. The bigger, the better. Take note right. of our fearless furry friend here, yes. humans. I appreciate it. Chris Bump. <laughs> <laughs> Watching you. <laughs> Smokey's done it again. Hi, Smokey. Only you can prevent wildfires. Anytime they're playing music downstairs, it's, it's loud. I go downstairs, see what they're doing, see what music they're doing, see what they're dancing to. I go play piano downstairs, they come get involved. Leah has a drum set beside it, banging that. Any music, uh, that's what they do. Amazon has always been at the top when it comes to new advancements in technology. Reporter Hannah Gutierrez has more on the, on the newest tech from the company. Yes, Jeff Bezos has been determined on occupying so many different markets. From online shopping to online video service and now grocery stores, Amazon Fresh has combined technology and grocery shopping to change the way we shop forever. Let's take a look. Amazon Fresh has combined high advances in technology with grocery shopping to make it a little more interesting and enjoyable for its customers. By creating what they call a dash cart and recently adding a new payment method that charges you by just your palm print, there is no doubt changes like these will continue to be seen throughout the future. Thanks to Amazon's new technological advances in grocery shopping, it has made it easier for groceries like these to get to your house.
Just Lockout technology is a form of uh, payment that is provided by Amazon Fresh for our customers. So we have two forms. We have Amazon One, we have the Dash Carts. Dash Carts are shopping carts that have cameras and light bars around the rim of the cart that allows customers to place an item in and it scans the barcode as you place it in and we have a scale at the bottom that measures the weight. This is particularly helpful for items like in our produce section where weight matters for pricing. Using your personal QR code found on your Amazon account, it allows you to sign into a cart and begin shopping. The Dash Cart is the first of its kind and allows customers the option to upload their personal shopping list and even accepts coupons. Just to be able to walk into a store, not ever have to pull out your card, all you got to do is grab items off the shelf, put it in your cart and walk out the door. It makes it a lot easier for us to uh, just live. It makes it simple. It doesn't make it complicated. You don't have to wait in line as long. You don't have to pull out all your cards out of your wallet. Um, innovations like that just make your life a lot easier. For me, I know when I go grocery shopping, I'm not one to like to stand in lines having to uh, wait a long time. So as a customer of Amazon Fresh, what I like so much about the Dash Card is that I'm able to go in, uh, get all the items that I like, and not have to stand in any lines and just leave once I'm done. And, and it just makes it more convenient for me and, and it makes it a lot faster. For Amazon Fresh specifically, we plan on opening up about 250 stores in the next two years. And the reason I believe Amazon Fresh is so successful is because it makes the shopping experience so easy and pleasurable for customers. With the innovation of Amazon One, the company hopes to give customers more freedom to shop at any of their Amazon brand locations without even needing to touch anything. Amazon will continue to make innovations that, quote, help you move seamlessly through your day. I look forward to seeing what other companies will take after Amazon's footsteps. I'm Hannah Gutierrez reporting for OC News. Getting a job or interview is hard enough when it comes to the interview. You really want to do well. Cal State Fullerton's Career Center has partnered with Tuffy's Basic Needs to make sure you nail that interview. Job interviews are hard enough, so Tuffy's Basic Needs is here to make it a little bit easier for you. The Career Center at Cal State Fullerton has partnered with Tuffy's Basic Needs to put on what they call a career closet. So our collaboration, we kind of have this career closet where we, uh, we take in, you know, donated clothes for students. So. Students get up to six free articles of clothing, um, so that can range from ties, suits, um, dresses, um, any of that variety as well. The Career Center and Tuffy's Basic Needs are hoping to keep this partnership going, so more tabling sessions can be expected to help get the word out. Students interested in picking up any articles of clothing can either come by a tabling session or go to Tuffy's Basic Needs Center from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. If you are interested in donating any clothing items, donations will be accepted directly through Tuffy's Basic Needs Center. So if you find yourself in a position where you need some clothes for that job interview, Tuffy's Basic Needs has you covered. For OC News, I'm Travis Jeffaway. A lot's been going on in the entertainment world. Reporter Anand Valderrama is here with the details. Thank you, Jackie. Yes, I have the latest in Hollywood news. From new parents to new music, I have the scoop. Let's take a look. Oh baby, it was a very special Mother's Day for actress Priyanka Chopra and singer Nick Jonas. Jonas announced on Instagram they were able to take their baby Malte Marie Chopper Jonas home from the hospital. The couple welcomed her through a surrogate in January, but then she spent more than 100 days in the newborn intensive care unit. Jonas thanked everyone who took care of her, saying they were there selflessly every step of the way. Congratulations, Nick and Priyanka. Swifty fans, on Friday, Taylor Swift released a remake of her new song, This Love, from the 1989 album On Friday at Midnight. The song is featured in this trailer for The Summer I Turn Pretty, a new Amazon Prime series by the author Jenny Han. This news is leaving Taylor Swift fans excited and wondering if she'll be able to release a new re a remake of the 1980 album as a whole. We'll have to wait and see. Rapper Kendrick Lamar released a new song called Heart Part 5 for his new album and is currently trending number one on YouTube. The artist criticizes modern notions of culture and deepfakes various famous artists like former NFL player OJ Simpson, rapper Kanye West, Hollywood star Will Smith, and the late NBA star Kobe Bryant. The music video is directed by Dave Free, expressing their love for the video. 
radio host Big Boy wrote, quote, This is truly amazing. This is beyond extraordinary. I can't stop watching this. So beautifully written and visually immaculate. End of quote. What a powerful music video by Kendrick Lamar. Looking forward to the new album. Back to you guys. On Saturday night, Cal State Fullerton had its annual spring concert. The concert featured performances from Art Miguel. Pardon me. The concert featured performances from artists Miguel and Max. Let's hear a few students' thoughts about the event. After two years, the ASI Spring Concert was held in person last Saturday. The event took place on campus in the intramural field. The special guests included Max and Miguel. Students went to social media to post what the concert about the concert and said it was a great way to spend their weekend. I really enjoyed that type of music, so I was interested in it already. I really feel like people, at least who dorm here, who are here a lot, uh, felt like they appreciated just being able to go out to the field, with walking distance, and get to enjoy it. I myself, I, I just I bought a whole card just so that I can be able to get in. <laughs> so yeah, I, was, I, I definitely would say worth the worth the money and worth the time. Well, you know, Jackie, I'm kind of a music lover myself, but unfortunately, all the artists I like are either really old, really old or dead. So I don't think <laughs> well, I'll be seeing them anytime soon. I mean, I'm pretty sure they had a really great time, right? But unfortunately, I wasn't able to make it. <laughs> no. Well, that's all we have for the show today, folks. Make sure to tune into our last newscast of the semester on Wednesday at 5 o'clock p.m. To keep up with all things OC News, make sure to follow us on Instagram at OC News CSUF and make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Titan TV CSUF. I'm Jacqueline Garcia. And I'm Gabe Larson. And from all of us here at OC News, have, have a, a great, great night. night.